Good morning, everybody. We hope you all are doing well this morning. We have a couple of announcements before we get started. The first one is a yay, God. We had 67 Thanksgiving meals collected last week that were distributed by Storehouse for Jesus to families in need. So that's really awesome. Thank you to everyone who brought a meal in to all of those who helped um, sort through those meals and collect them last Sunday. We really appreciate it. Um, we are now collecting Christmas gifts, which will also be distributed by Storehouse for Jesus. So before you leave today, if you want, there are um, Christmas lists posted somewhere out here, somewhere outside that you can take, and it'll have the person's name on it and what they want for Christmas. And what you can do is you can go through that list, pick a couple of items that you want to gift them with, and these are all going towards people who um, can't afford Christmas gifts. Some of them are the elderly, some are children. So check that out if you want. Those Christmas gifts are due December 6th. So you've got a couple of weeks for that. And then, what was my, oh yes, my last announcement is, if you're sitting in your car and you don't want to roll your windows down because you don't want to breathe, you don't want to be chilly, you should have gotten a card today that um, teaches you how to download the app Listen Everywhere. And essentially what that is is there's no latency. It's streaming all of the audio that's coming through the speakers into your car. Um, if you are having trouble downloading that, make sure that you're connected to our Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi that you want to connect to out here is called Hillsdale Stream. There's no password or anything like that, so you should be able to connect to that and then download that app this morning if you're interested in using that. So, those are all my announcements. Let's pray before we get started. Father, we thank you for another morning that we get to worship you, that we get to come together and praise your name. I ask that this morning you would uh, continue to teach us how to take on the posture of gratitude and of thankfulness as we're gearing up for a week that's all about being grateful, that's all about giving thanks. Would you remind us that it's not about our circumstances, it's not even about what we have, but ultimately it's about what you've done for us. We love you, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's sing this. I was buried beneath my shame.
chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. sing this together. He is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me, and oh, how he loves us.
If we have any kids pre-K through fifth grade, y'all are welcome to go with Miss Christy up there for Power Kids. Good morning. Welcome to Hillsdale. We're glad you're here to worship with us today. What a beautiful day it is out on the hill. It's um, quite um, ironic that the the day, the very day that we mail out a plan for us moving back inside for worship, our county goes into a state of red zone alarm, critical spread of COVID-19. What, what a, what, you know, we've, we've had the opportunity as a congregation to move inside since, um, well, since back the close of the month of October, um, when when the governor said we could move into phase three. And a lot of churches have done that. A lot of churches moved right away. But we didn't because we had this beautiful outdoor venue that everybody is enjoying. We're enjoying it too. Uh, but we realized as a leadership team that it's going to get cold at some point. And, and actually, we've lost a few Sundays to rain recently. So we said, let's go ahead and make plans to move inside. And the very day that we send the letter to you about doing that, uh, we hit this critical spread. And, and I understand from talking to uh, different folks and the healthcare folks, and it's, it, it's, it really is ramping up. And so I just wanted to let you know, we sent you that letter, but we're probably going to put a pause on that until our leadership team meets. They're meeting right after this service to, to begin praying and thinking about what we should do. You know, and, and I know that probably makes some people unhappy. We, we really want to make everybody happy, but the main thing that's on our mind is we want everybody to be healthy. So we will be revisiting that plan um, and not exactly sure, but we will let you know before next Sunday, what we're going to do. Hopefully, we have another day like this. Uh, as long as we can do this, this is a wonderful uh, place to worship. And it's becoming a very special place for all of us. So uh, bear with us and be patient and try not to get um, uh, too upset with us. We're trying our very best as leaders to keep your health and safety at the forefront. We don't want anybody to get sick. Be careful. Today, um, I was thinking about the, the week before Thanksgiving, obviously, and focusing on gratitude and how, how gratitude is portrayed in the scriptures. And so my process for preparing the sermon today was to think about who among our biblical characters expressed or had reason to express, I should say, the greatest gratitude, um, the most thankfulness as, as a human being. And I came up with a whole list of people. I, I wanted to narrow it down to one person so that we could focus in on that one person's gratitude um, in the scriptures. But really, you know, you have major characters. You've got uh, Adam. Eve, you have Moses, you have Noah, you have King David, uh, you have all of those wonderful prophets and characters of the Old Testament. Then you move to the New Testament, you've got Peter, Paul, you've got all of, all of the disciples, all of the people that Lazarus, Jesus told Lazarus to come out of the grave, you know, just incredible characters. And all of them, major and minor characters, uh, had wonderful reason to express gratitude. Uh, so I, I was trying to narrow that down, and I actually came up with our character today who's not one of the major characters uh, in our scriptures, but we, a matter of fact, we don't even know her name. But I landed on this lady who was caught in adultery, and we're going to read that scripture and share in our thoughts about her gratitude 
for what happened in her life. You know, uh, really what brought me to this place, too, was you may have seen this on the news this week. This guy who was hiking uh, on Mount Rainier and got caught, got basically lost, and um, they did find him. They found him, and, and, and they rushed him to the emergency room. His body temperature, when they got him to the ER, uh, was around 71 degrees. He was still alive. His heart was beating. They get him in the emergency room, and his heart stops. And it stops for 45 minutes. Now, I'd like to be in this ER if I ever have any calls to go to the ER because they were... They, they went beyond. I mean, they hooked him up to life support where literally um, they took his blood out of his body and put it through the machine that uh, restores oxygen, you know, and gives him a chance. But for 45 minutes, this guy's heart stopped. And then they resuscitated him back to life. Now, what I find just absolutely amazing about that story is, is um, when the news media got a hold of it, you, you have the guy sitting on the edge of his bed talking to us about that experience. And he's expressing his gratitude to the healthcare workers, to the ER doctors, to those who were tending to him in that emergency state and he said, thank you for not giving up on me. And it just, when, when I heard his words, I thought, yes, you, you would expect that kind of um, gratitude. And you would expect that expression. But, but what touched me more than anything else was the look on that man's face. That's something that you really can't convey to another with just words. You know, I, I think about uh, how attached we are here at Hillsdale to music, to, to the worship music that Tori and Noah and the worship team bring to us each and every week. And I think, I think why we are so attached to that is because we see in their faces what they feel. The music to them is, is an expression of, of their relationship with God. And so, so that's what I noticed with this man on TV who was given this report, and he looked like, you know, he had been through a fight, frostbite, all sorts of things, and, but he was looking at that camera and expressing with gratitude through his voice and through his expression how grateful he was that they didn't give up on him. And he meant it. And you, you knew that he meant it. I wish we had that opportunity with the biblical characters, by the way. I wish we could see and visualize more than just these words that uh, come from these pages, but that we could actually see them say, thank you for, for what's done. I would invite you to try to visualize as I read this morning about this lady who was caught in adultery and the expression she must have had with her encounter with Jesus. Chapter 8 of John's Gospel. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning he was back again at the temple a crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? See, John even records they, they were trying to trap him. They were trying to trap Jesus into saying something they could use against him. 
But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding. So finally, Jesus stood up and he said, all right, all right, all right. Let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Can you imagine the expression on her face? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O God. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What a risky move. What a risky move for Jesus to make. He said, wait, wait just a minute. Let anyone who has never sinned cast the first stone. You know, what if somebody would have said, okay, I'm living pretty good. I'll throw the first stone. What would have happened then? Would Jesus have had to step in front of the lady at that point and, and take the stoning on himself? Would that have been the end of his ministry, the end of his witness? A risky move. And I, I can imagine this, this lady, she knew being caught in this capital offense was a sure and certain death penalty. And now her death penalty was going to be carried out in front of everybody. And in front of this teacher, this healer, this miracle worker that was making waves all over the countryside, she was going to be an example in front of him of her capital offense and being executed. I can't imagine what she was thinking in the midst of the conversation that was going on. And then to have Jesus look at her after they all slipped away and said, where are they? What happened to those guys who were going to stone you and carry out this execution? Is there no one left to condemn you? Can, you? can you imagine what she's thinking? Well, maybe Jesus is going to kill me now. She says, no, Lord. Neither do I. Go and sin no more. I cannot imagine the just the pouring out of gratitude and thankfulness. Jesus just saved her life from sure and certain death. Now, you know, there's some things, when you, when you look at all of our biblical characters and when you look at gratitude that should be expressed through them and from us, there's, there's some common denominators that exist in human beings in, in this unique relationship that we have with God. What, what is 
time and time again spelled out in these scriptures for us to read and embrace. The very nature of God, God is our Savior. See, this revelation of rescue, we have been rescued from sure and certain death, each and every one of us. How can we not be grateful for that? How can we not live with a countenance of thanksgiving on our face with everything that we do, with every move that we make this side of heaven? How can we not show and express how we've been rescued from death? That's what each and every character in this book learns and it's what we learn as well we we need a savior we cannot save ourselves we are going to die this this earthly tent is going to wear out and exhaust and give up and we only have the hope of Christ Jesus our savior the, the other kind of common denominator that we see played out extremely well in this story with the woman is this revelation of grace, this revelation of forgiveness time and time and time again. We mess up. We sin. And and forgiveness is extended. Forgiveness is showered upon. Grace is showered. You know, they, they asked Paul after the resurrection and when um, the, this new way of living in Christ Jesus, you know, his blood flows through our veins. We talked about the vine and the branches last week. We, so so we, ask, we ask Paul, who was trying to help us unpack all of this understanding with God. He said, now that we have this forgiveness, now that we have this grace, listen, can we just go on sinning like we want to? (laughs) You know what he said, don't you? By no means. Forgiveness, listen, if you don't hear anything else today, forgiveness is not the same thing as tolerance. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we can disregard sin. A matter of fact, forgiveness means that we have to pay great attention to sin. Jesus says to the woman, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. This grace that we've been given is a revelation to us of how merciful and loving You know, a lot of us in our human condition and even in our churchy tradition, condition, we we tend to point fingers, don't we? Do you see do you see what they're doing? Preacher. And you know, a friend of mine told me once, when you point your finger, just remember there are three other fingers pointing right back at you. I like that. I, I, th- I think that's what the scriptures mean when it says, judge not lest ye be judged. Cast the first stone if you don't have any sin in your life. Self-righteousness is ugly. It is ungrateful living. The revelation of of grace. You know, there's also this key thing that I believe we need to take away from from the scripture today and from every character in the Bible with regard to gratitude. There there is this revelation of relationships. People say Jesus was notorious to eat with sinners and meet with the tax collectors and be around people that were doing bad things and 
You know, I, I believe that God, God's desire for us is that we grow in our fruitfulness. Remember when we talked about that vine and the branch thing? And the reason, the way that you can tell if a branch is connected to the vine is it bears good fruit. I believe gratitude is a good fruit. Being grateful for what God has done in our lives each and every day, no matter what our circumstances are, is a good fruit. And God allows, here, here's something, God allows us to be in the midst of relationships where those characteristics that God wants us to embrace are being represented just the opposite. In other words, God puts us around people who are ungrateful. God puts us around people who are haters. God puts us around people who who are nasty, and he doesn't do that so as to make our day bad. God allows that to happen so that we might grow in our fruitfulness. We're to love those who are haters. We are to show our gratitude and gratefulness to those who are not grateful, to those who don't understand gratitude and grace, for those who can't embrace God's love and forgiveness. That is, that's where we're supposed to be. It, it's amazing how God uses and develops and folds into good such horrible circumstances we're you know we're in the midst of a horrible circumstance but this isn't the last one that we will experience and and we're also in the midst of God folding his love and his grace and his rescue into our lives each and every moment I love what Paul wrote at the end of his letter, when he was talking about his own circumstances in his letter to the church at Philippi, he was talking about all of the trials, all of the things that God had allowed and was continuing to allow in his life. He, he says this, Listen, I know how to live on almost nothing. And I also know how to live with everything, with abundance. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or an empty one, whether it is with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. You see, that's our message from every single biblical character in this book. That's our message of gratitude. I can do everything in every situation, in every scenario through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning. changes not thy compassions they fail not as thou hast been thou forever will be summer and winter springtime and harvest sun moon and stars in their course
day and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings of mine with 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand that provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Thank you all so much for joining us. I just remembered something I forgot to mention during announcements and first service. Tomorrow, Hillsdale's first ever Christmas album is going to be out for all of you to hear. It'll be on YouTube, on iTunes, on Spotify, anywhere else. Is that it? We'll let you know if it's anywhere else. But And on CD. We have CDs too. So this is a gift for all of you. Um, Noah and Ethan and I put this together as the Hillsdale worship team. So it's called Quiet Songs for Christmas Time by Hillsdale Church. It'll be out everywhere tomorrow. So be sure to look for that. All right. We'll see you all next week.